Hey everyone, different kind of video today. So a lot of people have been asking us about the RTX 3000 series GPUs crashing. I am at a bike park. I want to take a couple hours off, uh, but this issue has been really popular on our social media. So I'm going to try and address it while I also get some time off doing some downhill mountain biking. So we're going to be talking about capacitors, uh, over frequency and GPUs crashing while I ride down a mountain because everyone wants to know about this. I wanted to come here. So we're going to do both at once. Now, this audio clip is an audio insert actually recorded a couple days after. So the video you're about to watch was recorded on Saturday, and then Monday night I came back, went straight to the studio, and recorded this section because there's actually been more development to the story. So the add-on that you're not going to hear me talk about in the biking video with the capacitors and crashing stuff is that NVIDIA has released a driver now, which according to EVGA, uh, their six cap cards are no longer crashing with that driver change by NVIDIA when they were before. So there's more to this than just the caps. This looks like a boosting behavior thing, but we'll talk about this more probably in a news video. Uh, for now though, let's get into the, the main story. So short of the issue is that cards are crashing and some games and stuff, largely because of, uh, well, there's two issues actually. There's frequency problem, there's the capacitor thing. So I wanna talk a little bit about both of those. Uh, this is, if you don't know, I have a side channel called GN Steve. I don't post too often, but when I do, I post downhill mountain biking, which is what this is. If you're wondering why, Am I talking about the capacitor issue here? Uh, basically, basically, uh, it's um, it's been nonstop 100 plus hour weeks, one after another, because of the RTX and other stuff. And I was like, yeah, I need a at least a short break because my um, and my job performance will stay high if I take at least a couple hours. So that's why I'm here. That's for why I'm talking about the issue. Uh, basically, driving up here, that story was it's a four hour drive for me. That uh, story was still developing about the capacitors and the crashing. And it's getting to a point where people kept blowing up our social pages asking about it. I was like, man, if I don't talk about this thing because I'm trying to take a short break, people are going to be like, why are you covering for the board partners? Why are you an NVIDIA shill? Why aren't you talking about this problem? So I figured I'd uh, do this. If you saw our stream, we got an update from EVGA on the PS Cats in that stream. And People were asking me on the stream, what do you think about the issue? And I was like, well, I don't want to talk about it because I don't have all the information yet. But I have enough now. So, benefit of a four hour drive is I had a lot of time to uh, talk to some people in the industry safely, mind you, <laughs> before anyone says anything. And, uh, and that gave me enough to do something. So, um, yeah, basics of the issue. There's one issue we started researching right before I left. I only have an hour researching it. It's so not much time. Where the partners are pushing frequency too aggressively, uh, like over two gigahertz, and the cards will crash when they peak. That's one issue. Other one is the uh, capacitors on the back of the GPU socket uh, being problematic. And I'm not going to talk about the electrical side of it. I'll leave that to other people. But I can talk about like why this happened. And it's a bit of the partner's fault. A, a bit at least 
and Vinian Smalls. And uh, of course, partners are very fast at throwing video under the bus, and video, I'm sure, would throw partners under the bus. But we can talk about both angles today. So as for the part of it that's on video's fault, a uh, couple things. One of them is NVIDIA is so paranoid about leaks that it's hurting itself. And obviously it's not even that do not doing that well at controlling leaks. So at some point you're like, you know, you're causing more damage than, than what you're preventing. Uh, so what I mean by paranoid of leaks we had partners telling us they didn't have functional drivers yet when we did. Uh, and so like, if you don't know, NVIDIA typically distributes a driver pack to partners that they do get some early, but the, oh shit, gosh, I did that really poorly. <laughs> but the, um, the drivers they get early are basically for mark only for testing cooler performance so if this crashing issue it's not really happening for mark it doesn't uh, or at least not often enough that they ever would have seen it it does happen in games and especially in the really old benchmark heaven. There's lighter load scenarios. Firmark specifically though, doesn't boost that high. Uh, drivers are built against it, works a little differently. So, this issue was entirely preventable. Uh, if NVIDIA had given partners more time and better drivers, like complete drivers. You guys are good, you keep going. I'll wait a minute. Yeah, you're good. So yeah, if NVIDIA would start giving actual drivers to board partners earlier, and stop worrying so much about leaks, then a lot of this would go better. But, you know, this issue again, 100% avoidable. Yeah, buddy. So yeah, part of the problem is they're getting, they get Furmark drivers early enough to test if their cooler's any good. But you need more than that, clearly. Like the boosting behavior is completely different. Power design responds differently. Furmark's power virus doesn't boost as high intentionally. And uh, you know we have partners telling us that they get the drivers that support the actual games like just before we do or sometimes after we do or they'll ask me hey did you get the drivers yet i'm like yeah i got them two days ago and they're like go oh. what was press getting stuff before us so those early drivers will often support fur mark and 3d mark and that's about it and not really games and that's where the problems are emerging is games none that we tested with our card we have one that has the six ps caps instead of four on the EVGA card, it, it was a world record card. It did well even on air. So it's not every card that's affected to be clear. I'm sure Nvidia is gonna see this and be like, well, we didn't make the cards though. Why is it our fault? But that's just the thing is like, they know damn well partners are going to rush and 
they don't have enough time. That's like, that's not gonna change the fact they're gonna rush. They're just gonna rush even more. So, not that anyone asked for my feedback, but if they did, it would be, you know, slow the hell down. Like, I, I was okay to kind of forgive the inventory stuff. It's just, just the nature of the world right now. My stuff too, I can't keep it in stock. But you know, we're a smaller company, that said, uh, a little more risk averse on some stuff. Like, for example, I don't want to over order mouse mats or something, because I don't know what the state of the economy and the world's gonna be. <laughs> and you have to remember that orders. You, got, you guys good? Cool. You have to remember orders for um, everything several months out, but especially video cards. So. so yeah, they're ordering, you know, like air shipping, all that stuff. And it's a time issue, ultimately. So that's the heart of it. You guys good? Cool. So EVGA caught the issue. Actually, I had a hint of a problem a few weeks before launch where some of the partners were telling us like hey hold on testing it this is all before launch so it's not like they were telling us to to like wait till after an embargo or anything uh, they're trying to save us time because they're like we're, we're not sure if vbios is done yet we might change the max boost and we don't want you to waste days of testing if the boost clock changes which i completely agree with so they thought it was vbios originally and boosting too high that is a problem but it's not this particular problem uh, I tested an MSI card that had that boosting too high issue and I haven't gotten through testing yet, done an hour on it, but in some applications it will crash to desktop from going past two gigahertz and it's not stable. So the capacitor one is a power design issue. They thought it was VBIOS at first. Some of these partners, they end up realizing it was the board design. In EVGA's case, they claim that they never shipped any to public. Only some reviewers got them like us. And even then, not all are affected, clearly. But still a lot of cards with issues did get out there. Some are from the frequency, and some are from board partners with varying designs. I think uh, MSI and Zotac might be affected. So I talked to Asus, and uh, they're still figuring out exactly what's going on. This blindsided them as well. And currently they're saying they think that... So they're apparently their board photos online are pre-production and not final and apparently the final version is different for the capacitor design on the back and that's the same as the case was for EVGA so if that's true that's good but clearly there's a lot of posts online of people who have this crashing issue and it's one or the other it's either frequency the capacitor thin or the two combined it could be that they're related uh, although my understanding is that they, they are not in every single case related but a lot of this could have been prevented if Nvidia had just given proper drivers to the board partners early enough that they're not asking me for the drivers and so that's that's a large part of the reason that obviously nvidia should be providing them plus they're making the product they've got millions of dollars on these things and like why do reviewers get it first one would think partners would get them before press and before I, I nvidia would be like well we do give them drivers but they're not complete they don't do everything can't, clearly can't test the card thoroughly enough. There's also an NVIDIA application that uh, must be passed. We saw this in MSI's factory. We have a factory tour on this channel. So it has to go through a special NVIDIA black box program. We don't have much insight to it, but we've got footage of it in the MSI GPU factory tour running. It has to pass that. And all these models passed. 
So maybe Nvidia didn't catch one that had, uh, or the factory didn't catch one that was crashing uh, and it was unfortunate, or maybe the drivers were, you know, the test isn't complete enough, that, that Nvidia black box test isn't doing enough. And I think it's the second one because at the factories, 100%, at the factories we've been to for GPs, 100% of every single model, of every single card goes through testing and burning. All of them, every single one that goes to retail goes through burning and testing. So it's not failing there. And clearly the test is not good enough. Something's missing. And it's these, uh, these more, these lighter workloads that aren't just a power virus. Something that strains the clock or the GPU core in a different way. I'm gonna do this one again. Uh, I wanna do some other trails that are a little harder, but um, I don't wanna try and explain GPUs while I do them. So, trying to, trying to do some fun only ride. And I can hear my, my shifter cables getting eaten by the wheel right now. Oh, I'm gonna pull over. So, um, yeah, some of it's the fault of partners, obviously. And it's the ones who rush to market instead of holding, or the ones who don't discover the issue at all. Whereas at least with a few of them, like I just talked about, they're at least finding the issues and holding stuff. But uh, that said, NVIDIA knows damn well how capitalism works. And it knows that first mover advantage is real. And it knows some partners are gonna be stupid and ship knowing there's a problem, hoping nothing comes of it. So some of that responsibility, a lot of it's still on NVIDIA. But uh, if you're not aware of how GPUs are made, we do have videos of the physical process and the design process. And Normally, partners are lucky. They start getting the schematic like a month or two ahead of launch. Oh, shit. If they're lucky, it's two months. If they're not, it's like one. We've seen both, but the end result, that's windy. end result is that they get the schematic, maybe they can do custom PCBs for launch, maybe they don't have time for it. Either way, they're working on cards. So then, uh, mix of partners on that capitalist grind, can't fault them for that too much, because they don't want to give someone else first mover advantage, but at the same time, good on those who caught the issue and held their stuff back. And hopefully NVIDIA learns that, uh, that this like ultra paranoid about leaks thing is gonna cause it a lot more bad press. Now, uh, a lot of people started buying FE cards or want to because of this design issue, but it's getting resolved. And by the way, FE cards not the best thermally. Certainly not the best PCB, although better than a lot of the cheap reference models with cheap fats on them and stuff. But uh, still not getting the best if you buy FE. Keep that in mind. I think the biggest issue here is that um, NVIDIA is hurting its re launch reputation. So like 20 series, right? They got torched by us and a lot of other reviewers, but it's sad because 30 was, in terms of performance, pretty good recovery for them and price. Marketing, not so much, but it's a good product though. 
where it's 20. You've got this new RTX thing. Uh, people aren't used to the name. They have to be told what the technology is. By the way, technology doesn't exist for 55 days after whatever after launch. So they got pretty beaten up over that, rightfully so. And then there's the issue of memory artifacting, where we got, I don't remember how many, I want to say like a dozen cards from viewers in, <laughs> all memory artifacting, like completely useless cards. And uh, they fixed it, sure, but you know, that into this stuff, hey, come on guys, no one's going to trust their launches. Why on earth would anyone observe this stuff twice and then want to be a first party first day adopter? Of course the answer is, well, it's going to sell out and you hope these issues don't happen and you want to make sure you get one, but you know. Yeah, so, so I think uh, the big takeaway here is NVIDIA, you know, like why does this keep happening, right? The answer is they, they're, they've got, they're like commenters who go first. I think it's trying to be first right now. And a lot of people are looking at this cynically because of all the mistakes. And now people are like, well, what, what do they know about AMD that we don't? that caused them to screw this launch up so bad. And uh, whether or not they do know anything or not, that's kind of the, the perception. I'll go ahead and say, I don't think they knew anything special when they decided to launch this card. I don't think it's some big conspiracy, but I do think it's a big screw up. And, uh, Yeah, they just need to slow down. That said, slowing down wouldn't have helped their inventory issue. We've spoken to a lot of people and the general answer to, if you launched in October, would you still have had this uh, no inventory issue? Everyone told us like, oh yeah, definitely. A month wouldn't have helped that. Maybe it's out in five minutes, <laughs> you know, instead. But uh, different issue entirely though. I think that one's easier to recover from than products broken. At least the other one you're like, whoa, so popular. It can look like a good thing. Works well for customer psychology. Card's broken, can't really spin that. So that's gonna be the, uh, dis that'll be the discussion for today. I know it's not like the normal type of video, and like I said, uh, caught me right at the end of a pretty long work cycle. So I'm only making this, uh, I'm too tired even for these jumps. I'm only making the video because uh, getting a lot of people are like, hey, what do you guys think? Which is super cool. I appreciate that you all actually care what we think. If you want some info on the electrical side, I'm not looking into that. I don't consider myself particularly qualified on the electrical engineering stuff. Not what I specialize in. And I try not to generalize, so I would encourage you to check out Bill Zoid's video where he rants about the yeah, F-Rate pause caps, but also he talked about the electrical side of the thing, thing and Igor's article. Igor is the one who he got tipped off and started to look into it initially. So, 
there's the places I would recommend for uh, early electrical discussion. Um, but hopefully this gives you like an idea of how stuff gets made behind the scenes. Thanks. Have a good ride. Yeah, so um, if you want to know more about how that stuff's made, we have a factory tour video on it. We also have tours of radiation testing for design. watching and check back this channel for more actual testing and computer stuff sorry this one wasn't as in depth and if you want some biking stuff you can go to the GN Steve side channel I'll link it in the description below but thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, like I said, I consider this a one of the lowest quality videos we've made, but I really wanted a break. I also didn't want to leave this unanswered. So there's my hybrid of it. I'll see you all next time.